as the drug industry worked with penicillin and tried to improve upon that particular product, various semi-synthetic and alternative antibiotics were discovered and used in the treatment of various bacterial infections. The penicillins and the semi-synthetic derivatives, which are simply penicillin that have been modified, are typically going to target peptidoglycan synthesis and prevent the cross-linking and the sturdy formation of peptidoglycan, weakening the cell surface. Notice on this illustration, the many semi-synthetic derivatives, there are all kinds of psyllins that are used now in the treatment of various bacterial infections. Here are some examples of semi-synthetic penicillin derivatives. Notice that they're going to take essentially the fundamental penicillin structure and add some side chains that would either increase stability or increase resistance to penicillinase or acids in the environment. For penicillin V, that was often a commonly used penicillin it's simply acid resistant. Methicillin was a derivative or semi-synthetic derivative of penicillin that could resist the enzyme penicillinase that can be produced by some bacteria to break down penicillin. Dicloxacillin was simply a combination of both the acid and penicillinase resistance that would allow us to use the antibiotic to treat these kinds of complex either drug-resistant or acid environments. And on and on, the different types of semi-synthetics were produced. The side groups would modify or, and improve the effectiveness of the antibiotic. And so you've probably taken various kinds of semi-synthetic derivatives or maybe even had family members who've used ampicillin or amoxicillin to treat various types of infections. You might have even, at some time, used penicillin. Here are some additional examples of penicillin derivatives, the semi-synthetics like ampicillin and amoxicillin. Now, the other two, tocarcillin and pepericillin, are used with either various specific narrow spectrum activity, such as tocarcillin, Ticarcillin against gram negative bacteria and the piperacillin, which has a broader spectrum of activity. They're all types of semi synthetic derived penicillins that have varying effectiveness, and oftentimes they're chosen either for their spectrum of activity or perhaps for the type of um, target body system. Maybe it's more easily dissolved in different body fluids or transported more effectively in bloodstream. But lots of choices of semi-synthetic penicillin derivatives. Here are several examples, including penicillin, of peptidoglycan competitive inhibitors. The beta-lactam drugs, in which we find penicillin and the penicillin semi-synthetic derivatives, are going to inhibit or interfere with what are called the cross-wall or cross-linking that are used to stabilize the structure of peptidoglycan. Bacitracin is going to interfere with the transport of peptidoglycan precursors across the cytoplasmic membrane. And vancomycin is essentially going to bind to amino acids that are used in the construction of peptidoglycan. All three, the bacitracin, vancomycin, and the beta-lactam drugs, like the penicillins, are all collectively called cell wall inhibitors. The original definition of antibiotic was a chemical produced by a fungi or mold that would inhibit or kill a bacterium.
It was chemical warfare between the mold and the bacteria naturally occurring in the environment. Now today, the word antibiotic has a generally broader definition to simply mean antimicrobial. But for our purposes, we need to remember the original definition for our course, that an antibiotic is a chemical produced by a mold to inhibit or kill a bacterium. Notice that we have a couple of illustrations of classic antibiotics. Penicillin is produced by the mold penicillium and cephalosporin produced by the mold cephalosporium. Both have beta-lactam rings and both are very good or have been very good in the past at being used to treat various types of bacterial infections. Here are photos from the 1970s of how penicillin affects the growth and the formation of gram-positive coxi. Using a scanning electron microscope, scientists have examples of both untreated on the left and treated gram-positive coxi. Notice that after treatment with essentially the cell wall inhibitor, that the outer covering of the cell wall has become weakened and you can see that the individual coxi are very distorted and expanded beyond normal structure or normal shape. And as the weakening continues, eventually these cells of bacteria will expand and rupture or lyse, thus killing the bacteria causing the infection. 